Hey guys, welcome back to Motion Raceworks YouTube channel. Today we're back with another Tech Tip Tuesday and today we are talking about mechanical fuel pump drive accessories. For a lot of people, you're building a project and it's really escalated quickly. We all know it happens. And uh, all of a sudden now you're at a mechanical fuel system. And for a lot of us, this is the first time uh, dealing with this stuff. To be honest with you, it seems super complicated from the outside. There's very little info. People act like it's a black art. Nobody wants to tell you a lot. And uh, you know, the world's just busy. So it's hard to get good information from people. So we wanted to cover pump speed, pulley diameters, what setups work with what, and uh, hopefully clear the air so that when it's time to go to a mechanical fuel pump or if you're ready, we get you what you need, you get what you need. You're not uh, rebuying things later on and there's just less confusion overall. You know, if you look on the market, there's just all different types of pulleys and probably the most daunting thing for a lot of people is what pulley do I need to run? How do I need to set up mine? Do I do it off the back of the balancer? Do I have the front of the balancer? What type of belt do I need? HTD uh, pulleys are the most common. It's using an HTD belt. It's kind of like a cog drive, if you will, uh, but it's a little bit different. Most of them will use a 10 millimeter belt. You'll have everything from a 25 to an 18 to a 36, 50, 58 tooth. What does all that mean? Why does the crank uh, need to be 18 and why does the pump need to be 36 in a lot of combos? Basically the way fuel pumps are designed, they have a spur gear assembly and their flow, their flow volume matched. Um, basically the speed of the pump creates a certain amount of flow and that's what they're built off of. Now these aren't really necessarily like a electric fuel pump where the faster you spin them, the more fuel you get. A thing called cavitation will happen. If you overspin a pump, a lot of times it'll negatively affect the pump's performance. Um, obviously there's always a little bit of a buffer in there, but if you miss by a lot, there's a good chance you're gonna cavitate your pump and then you're gonna run out of fuel pressure and have all kinds of issues. The thing that you need to know is industry standard for uh, the flow and the speed on a mechanical fuel pump is 4,000 RPMs. So what does that mean? That means if your engine is turning 8,000 RPM, you need to somehow cut that speed in half to uh, power your fuel pump. And uh, oil pumps are the same way as far as uh, any of them I've seen. 4,000 RPMs. You're not gonna run the same size pulley on each because you'll have an 8,000 RPM on each and then you have an issue. So you're gonna have to use a little bit of math to figure out what size pulley you need, which is uh, why you know a lot of small block, big block stuff is not gonna go past 8,000 RPM. A very common one that we just came up with was this new low profile mandrel. It works great for Coyote engines, works great on uh, F-body, ATI balancer, and a variety of others. If you have questions about what it fits, definitely let us know. It doesn't fit every ATI, ATI balancer, but it's a great solution for a lot of them. So this is an 18 tooth and this is a 36 tooth. Uh, a lot of these engines spin right at 8,000 RPM. And uh, if you're running a 13 gallon a minute pump, you wanna spin it at 4,000 RPM to get the most out of it. Otherwise you overpaid for a pump that you're not utilizing. For the same reason, if you're an LS guy, you have uh, the option on an ATI balancer to add this back hub, uh, which just simply replaces the old hub that you had on it. And it has a HTD drive. The F-body GTO version has a 25 tooth pulley, uh, which is why we have a 50 tooth pulley for our mechanical fuel pump systems. So you're starting to see a trend here. Uh, a lot of these combos run 8,000 RPM max uh, type of situations, maybe slightly more. So we try to cut them in half, 25, 50. Having this be 50, it's spinning half as fast as the crank is. Obviously, if you start spinning 9,000 RPM, you're gonna have to do a little bit more math. I guess what I'm getting at is there is an exact science behind why these things are uh, sized the way they are, and that's why we create a uh, pulley that's that size or that many tooth count. So this video wasn't meant to be a QVC product video, but we do have uh, several options and a lot of bolt-on options. For the Corvette style balancers that are, they're actually, 28 tooth, we have a 56 tooth HDD, and then we have our new reversible bracket. We have a ton of mechanical stuff, and to be honest with you guys, if you ever have questions, give us a call. Our sales staff are happy to help inform you and get you what you need, or shoot us an email at sales at motionraceworks.com. But right now, let's go to the uh, whiteboard and we'll show you some math to uh, figure out what you need, or at least a good range to fit something close. Okay, so Doug now the science guy here. Uh, we're just gonna do some simple math. So let's say you have a uh, Coyote and you're spinning 8,600 RPM. We're gonna uh, put 8,600 RPM here. 
We're gonna use the 18 tooth Motion Raceworks mandrel that I showed you earlier. So we're gonna put that 18 over here. We know we wanna to get to 4,000 RPM, so how do we do it? We're basically gonna take 8,600 divided by 4,000. I get my uh, retirement calculator out here. That's gonna give me 2.15. So 8,600 divided by 4,000 equals 2.15. So now what we're gonna do is take this 18 times 2.15, put it in our calculator, 18 times 2.15, and that means that uh, 38.7 is gonna be the optimal to keep it right at 4,000. Now, this is a good example because that is a 7% difference than our 36 tooth. That's, that's an okay amount. Uh, you're talking about less than a few hundred RPM difference from the 4,000 max. There, that's built into that thing. What you don't want to be doing on these types of combos is spinning it a thousand RPM higher uh, because you're cutting that in half. It's, you know, 300 RPM basically. So if you spin that thing and go to say 5,200 RPM on a pump side, you're gonna get into a lot of trouble. So I'll do one more example real quick and uh, hopefully that'll explain kind of where we're at. Okay, so we'll take an LS engine, uh, some guys spinning the heck out of it. I see some guys up like in the 9,000 RPM range. So we're gonna say we have a 9,000 RPM um, LS engine that we are uh, spinning and we're gonna use the back of that ATI hub. Uh, say we have enough, uh, F body style balancer. It's got 25 teeth, just like I showed you earlier, that one that replaces it. Um, and then we have uh, the option for a 50 or a 58 tooth pulley on the other side of it. So if we're trying to get to 4,000, 4, um, we're gonna divide 9,000 by 4,000. Um, put it in our calculator here. 2.25. So that's kind of our multiplier. So if we have a 25 tooth built into the back of our ATI balancer, as a lot of people do, um, you're gonna times that by 25, you're gonna times 25 by 2.25, and that's gonna give you 56.25. So the extreme there shows you that if we have like a kit that we just call for the F body just for nice uh, round even purposes. Like I said, kind of basing off 8,000 RPM. If you decide at some point you want to spin it higher than 8,000 RPM and you want to go to 9,000 RPM, it's as simple as a pulley change and then you basically whip that pump right back into shape uh, from going from 4,000 to higher. So anyways, I hope that my math kind of helped you guys understand we're basically in the end of the day trying to get, the, get that pump right at 4,000 RPM. Well, regardless of the engine RPM or what pulley size, that'll help you decide. You know, a lot of times the standard pulley on the mandrel or on the back of the balancer is gonna be one thing. Uh, getting it back to 4,000 RPM on the pump side is all we're really worried about. From there, it's just finding a belt and hooking it up. So I hope this helped you guys figure it out. Like I said before, if you have questions, give us a call. We're always happy to help with your electric or mechanical fuel pump needs. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget if you have questions, drop them in the comment section below. We love to hear from you guys and we wanna answer your questions and help you with your project. See ya.